So today we're going to be talking about power assist options. These are really expensive and they can really change your life. So it's a really big decision and I understand why a lot of people were asking me about this. I previously had a smart drive and I did a video about that. So I'll leave that in a card up here. But the smart drive didn't work for me for a number of reasons. So a lot of people were interested in that themselves because they thought it was something that they wanted to use and then seeing it not work out for me made them feel quite uneasy about that decision, which I understand. I now have an eFix. Again, I have a video on that, so I'll leave it in a card up here somewhere. And the Alba eFix works a lot better for me and I'm getting on better with that. And in this whole process, I've also tried some power assisted wheels so I can give a bit of information about that. We're going to go through the smart drive first, we'll talk about the pros and cons, then we'll do the e-fix, the pros and cons, and then we'll discuss power assisted wheels. So if you're thinking of getting a power assist, as there are pros and cons to both of them, it does have to be a personal decision, but this might guide you in the right direction, and it might give you some information that could alter your decision. So starting with the smart drive, this is a great option for active users. So it's a device that sits on the back of your wheelchair. You have a bracelet type thing and that's how you control it. The great thing about this is that it's just that small compact device that goes on the back of your wheelchair. And so because of that, it is really lightweight, really easy to put into a car. Like I said, it's designed for active users. So these are people that are using their wheelchairs a lot. They're able to self propel, but they maybe need a bit more help with that. And it works in the same way as a normal wheelchair. So if you're used to going up and down curbs, then you would tackle them the same way. The smart drive just accommodates it when you, you have to do a wheelie to go up curbs and you just do all of that the same way. Another great thing about this is that it's highly compatible with a rigid active user chair. And that makes sense because most people that would want something like the smart drive would tend to be in an active user chair already. And a lot of the time it is rigid because it gives more stability. So those are all of the great things about the smart drive. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. As I hinted out there, it really is a device that is made for an active user. And how the smart drive works is that you tap your wrist onto anything and then it starts going and then you just use your manual wheels to steer. So you steer in the same way, but it does the pushing for you. Because of that, I thought it would be a great option for me. However, I actually found it really physically taxing to the point that I couldn't do it. My shoulders and my hands were still dislocating. My hands were the biggest problem. I've not got my braces on at the moment, but I had a chronically dislocated thumb at the time, which was held in with a brace. At the moment, my joints are a lot better, but I still physically wouldn't be able to do the smart drive. I think there's a lot more that goes into steering than you realise. So if you do have difficulties with your shoulders and your hands, I know a lot of my followers will have subluxations and joint pain and arthritis and things like that. And so I will say that you could potentially struggle with it. Most companies will let you have a demo, so that's great. But if you do have one, you need to really be in tune with yourself and think about how you're feeling whilst you're using it because if you want it to be for long term then it needs to be comfortable to use. For me my hands were just dislocating too much and I just couldn't do it. It was also really wearing me out and so yes I could get to A to B but then when I was at my destination I was too ill at that point to actually do anything so it wasn't a very good option for me. The battery life is also not the best. You have to charge the smart drive once a week even if you're not using it and that keeps the battery going otherwise the battery will just lose power over time and when you end up charging it it won't be charged for as long basically and I just had a lot of problems with the battery life in general and I was told that that was quite a common thing so that is something to consider. However it is just a small compact unit so it's not that hard to charge and if you're using it a lot you won't notice that as a problem. For me, because I can get so ill where I'm in bed for a few weeks, it's not practical for me to even remember, let alone have the strength to get up and go and charge something I'm not using. So that wasn't working out for me. Another thing is that I found 
tapping into the right speed quite temperamental and quite difficult to judge. So you could see the speed on your bracelet and it's hard to look around where you're going and look at the speed to tap yourself into the right speed or if you went over bumps that could act as a tap which could make you speed up or stop and I just really didn't like that, I didn't feel like I was in control of it and especially because I'm at uni and I'm with friends a lot I want to be able to walk alongside them so to speak but I felt like it was just stopping and starting and it was causing a barrier which I didn't like. I also found that the smart drive struggled quite a bit on uneven ground and where I live is a lot of cobblestones and things like that and the smart drive would either stop and sometimes it would even fall off. I know that this seems very negative for the smart drive but this is an option that didn't work out for me. You have to bear in mind that for someone else where there's more smooth ground and maybe they're a bit more physically able than me in their upper body and also energy levels. There was a lot that went into it, it was energy, pain, dislocations, all made it not a suitable option for me. But for someone else this could be perfect so please do bear that in mind. Moving on to the Alba eFix which is what I have now, the biggest pro for me is that it's controlled with a joystick which is just so easy to use and almost takes the whole strain off of your body and it turns it into a power chair so it makes sense that this is going to be a lot easier on you. So with this power assist I have hardly any pain, I don't have dislocations, I don't get fatigued by it and I'm not limited by the chair so you know that's a big thing for me. The battery life was also a huge bonus, I can charge the battery and it will last for quite a few outings and when I'm not using it, if it does go for a couple of weeks it doesn't seem to be affected and it seems to be working really well. I'm really happy with it. Another thing about charging it is that you can take the battery out separate to the chair so your wheelchair could stay in the car or something like that and you can still charge it. So it's got powered wheels but that doesn't inhibit your ability to charge it and it doesn't affect the ease of charging it. Another bonus of the eFix for me is that it's compatible with a folding frame. So folding frames can fit into smaller car boots, which is something that I was looking for. However, if you've got a rigid chair, then the eFix is not compatible and equally that could be a major disadvantage. So moving on to the cons of this chair, one that I struggled to get over was the fact that you look disabled in it and that it's not very... I guess like trendy looking, it doesn't look active. Obviously these are things that don't really matter and it's not something that I've thought about since using it but in the beginning I found it quite hard to take that step. Me using a wheelchair felt like a big step in my illness journey and then going from a manual wheelchair to essentially a powered wheelchair I felt like I was looking a lot more, not more ill but I was looking less capable and less able which is a really weird thing to think about because actually I was just looking how I am. I'm not very physically capable in some respects. This is a kind of awkward one to talk about but I think a lot of you will understand. A lot of you have actually talked to me about this and said that you need a power chair but you can't get over how it would look which brings me to one of my favourite sayings you should never let how you look be more important than the things you do. This is so much easier said than done and I completely understand that but like I said for me once I got the chair I just didn't think about it again like it was a huge step and it did feel difficult but then as soon as I was in the chair and having freedom it's just not something you think about. Having said that I didn't reach full independence with this chair. I expected to and I nearly have, I'd say I'm about 95% independent, but there are some curves which are just a bit too big for it. So how you can get around this is either to have really big casters on your chair, or you can go up curves backwards. I don't feel comfortable doing this in the road, and so I do go out with someone, they help me for the curves, and then I'm independent the rest of the time. But I would say that is a negative to the chair, because if you're going to struggle with curves, then the difference between 95% and 100% independence is actually really great. And I mean great as in big, not great as in fantastic. The other things to consider is that the wheels are very heavy, so if you're going to be lifting it in and out of a car a lot, especially by yourself, 
then that could be really tricky. For me, I'm not the one that lifts it and it doesn't go in a car often, so it wasn't a problem. And like I said before, it doesn't inhibit charging the chair, so you can leave it in the car boot if that's easier, and just take the battery out to charge it. One other thing that slightly affected my independence in the chair though, is that it can be quite tippy on steep slopes, mainly being bus ramps. Most of the time it's fine, but if the ramp is a bit too steep, then the chair can tip and that can be quite hard to deal with. And it's the same with curves, if they're a bit too high it can cause your chair to tip up and that hasn't left me feeling very confident when I'm by myself. So that's also something to consider. Okay, and lastly, we're going on to powered wheels. We'll be talking about powered wheels such as the E-Motions, the Twion wheels, and any other type of powered wheels where the power is in the wheels and they give you a boost when you push it. We'll be grouping those together in one subset. However, I can give a little bit of advice for specific types of wheels. So the main positive for this is that it's great for active users because you still get to use your manual chair in the way that it's intended. This light is really throwing me off. So you still push the wheels as normal, you're just given a boost when you do that. And as well as that, a lot of wheels actually come with a drive setting, so you can put them on drive and it works in a similar way to the smart drive. So you would use your wheels to steer and the wheels power themselves. The Alba E-Motion wheels in particular have an advantage in that you can program the wheels individually. So if you have one arm that's weaker than the other, you can program it to have more power in that wheel than the other one, and that can be a really helpful thing. And then potentially something you might consider is that because you're still using it in the normal way and you're pushing the wheels, it does still look like an active chair. So if that is something that's important to you, then it could be a good option. In terms of the disadvantages, the wheels themselves tend to be very heavy, which can cause two problems. One is that it's difficult to lift in and out of the car, so again that's something to think about. But also, when I was using it, I found that the assistance was having to combat the weight of the wheels, as well as giving me energy to push, and so I wasn't getting as much out of it as I expected. I felt like I was still having to exert too much energy, and I was putting too much strain on my joints and I did still sublux my hands and my shoulders while pushing it and so I physically wasn't able to do that. Even on the drive setting I found it, I found that it was just too much strain for me. But again, for a more active user this wouldn't be a problem, especially if you're used to pushing an active chair already. And that's all of the notes I have, so let me know if you have any questions. I hope this helped a bit. I did find it difficult when I was choosing, hence why I had to go through the process twice, so please do ask me if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching, bye!